Hi, everybody. Uh, we're back. Uh, I was having some technical uh, difficulties yesterday, so I had to give it up and uh, figure on doing a part two. So continuing with section 7.2, uh, we've come to an example of finding a, a, a critical value T sub alpha over two. So they want me to find the critical value T sub alpha over two corresponding to a 95% confidence level given that the sample has size N equals 15. All right, so uh, here's the picture. Again, it looks kind of like a normal distribution. Don't pay any attention to the answer down here. All right, <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. So a 95% confidence level means, again, that 95% of the data is right in the middle, which means 5% is outside. That means 2.5% at the bottom and 2.5% at the top. Okay. And then the other thing I need to know is because N is 15, that means the number of degrees of freedom is one less than that, which is 14. So I'm gonna show you two different ways uh, to find this critical value. First, by using the table, this is table A3. So let me get over to that. Here we go. This is table A3. Uh, so you just need to know two things. You need to know what's the area in one tail. And we just said that's 0 0.025. And then down here on the side, you go down to the number of degrees of freedom, which is 14. And where that row and that column meet, I see a 2.145, which is how they got this answer here. So the T-score that cuts off the top 2.5% of the distribution is 2.145. All right, now if you prefer technology, I wanna show you a website uh, where you can find that T value. If you go to Google and type in T distribution calculator, you can see I've uh, looked for this before. The first result that comes up is a site that I like called Stat Trek. So it's sort of like Star Trek except stat. So I'm gonna click on that and it brings me to this T distribution calculator. So you see there are uh, a few things to enter here. If you enter three of these things, it will come up with the fourth thing for you. So uh, the random variable is the T score. The degrees of freedom is 14. I'm gonna leave the T score blank because that's what I'm trying to find. And then here they want me to fill in a probability. So this is the probability that the random variable T is less than or equal to the T score that's going to fill in this blank. So remember, we're looking for the T score that cuts off the top two and a half percent. Notice the less than or equal. So you have to put the complement of the two and a half percent, which would be 97.5%. Uh, and you can see I've entered that before. All right, so now if I hit calculate, it comes up with the same value as what I got from the table. Uh, there's also a way to do it with a graphing calculator. Um, I don't have a graphing calculator handy right now, so I'm gonna skip that and just uh, say that if you're motivated to figure out how that works, um, should be able to figure that out with your owner's manual or Google. All right. So uh, there we are, T is 2.145. And also from the table. <clears throat> oh, and uh, I will have a link to table A3 in the um, description of this video. All right, we did something uh, almost identical to this in section 7.1. If you're given the confidence interval, and you wanna find the point estimate and the margin of error from the confidence interval. You do that the same way uh, that we did in 7.1. The point estimate, which this time is X bar, is going to be the average of the upper and lower confidence limits. The margin of error, just like in 7.1, is going to be the range of the, con or the, the length of the confidence interval, the upper limit minus the lower limit divided by two. This is the distance from the middle of the interval 
to uh, one of the limits. All right, and now we come to uh, determining the sample size required to estimate a population mean within a certain margin of error. So just like in 7.1, uh, they will give you the desired margin of error and you have to come up with the minimum sample size required to um, get that margin of error. Okay, so uh, reviewing the notation again, mu is the population mean, sigma is the population standard deviation, x bar is the sample mean, e is the desired margin of error, and now we're back to z score. The z score is separating an area alpha over two in the right tail of the standard normal distribution. We're not going to use t scores for this because we're trying to find the minimum sample size required. Finding a t-score requires that you already know the sample size. So using a z-score instead uh, is kind of a worst case scenario because it's going to um, give you something, uh, a score that's bigger than any of the t-scores. Okay, the requirements are that the sample must be a simple random sample. And here is your formula. So the minimum sample size required to get a margin of error E is the square of Z sub alpha over two times sigma divided by E. And just like in section 7.1, if the computed sample size is not a whole number, you want to round that up to the next larger whole number. Okay, now if uh, sigma is unknown, which is usually the case, there are a couple of things you can do. One thing is you can use the range rule of thumb that we talked about, gosh, I think that was back in chapter three, to uh, estimate the standard deviation. Remember that uh, sigma is approximately the range divided by four, and you would get the range from uh, sample data. Or you can just collect a sample of any size, I mean, the bigger the better. And uh, using the first several values, calculate the uh, sample standard deviation and use that instead of sigma. All right, and uh, another possibility is estimate the value of sigma by using the results of some other earlier study. So you have several options for estimating sigma. Normally you won't know it exactly. All right, so here's an example. Assume that we want to estimate the mean IQ score for the population of statistics students. How many statistics students must be randomly selected for IQ tests if we want 95% confidence that the sample mean is within three IQ points of the population mean? Okay, so remember, uh, we've done this many times now. For a 95% confidence uh, interval, the corresponding uh, critical value for Z is 1.96. Uh, you can find that on table A2, which is the table that we were using uh, back in chapter six. Because we want the sample mean to be within three IQ points of mu, that's your margin of error, so E equals three. Uh, also, we can assume that sigma equals 15. See the discussion that immediately precedes this example. And I think we missed out on that because this example is probably taken out of the textbook and they forgot to include that discussion. All right. <laughs> but in any problem that you're going to have to do, uh, they will be pretty transparent about giving you a way to uh, estimate sigma. Okay. <laughs> so uh, here's what we get. Here's your formula. So you fill in 1.96 for Z sub alpha over two, fill in 15 for sigma, fill in three for E. That comes out to 96.04, uh, which despite being so close to 96, we're gonna round that up to 97. Because again, this means, this 96.04 means a minimum of 96.04 students. 96 students would not meet that minimum, all right? Comes very, very close, but not quite. So to be extra safe, uh, always round that number up. It will usually come out to 
um, be a decimal, not a whole number. All right, so among the thousands of statistics students, we need to obtain a simple random sample of at least 97 of them in order to estimate the population mean IQ score uh, to within three points. All right, now in the rare instances where sigma is known, then the comparable is constructed using the standard normal distribution instead of the student t distribution. So this looks just like uh, the formula that we were using earlier. Remember that formula was E equals T sub alpha over two times S over the square root of N. So the only difference is you use your known population standard deviation instead of S and you use Z sub alpha over two instead of T. All right, so here's an example. Use the 15 birth weights of girls given below for which N equals 15 and X bar equals 30.9 hectograms. Construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the mean birth weight uh, of all girls by assuming that sigma is known to be 2.9 hectograms, okay? So it was actually very nice of them to tell me X bar uh, because since they've given me all the sample data, uh, we could have figured that out, all right? I've actually seen um, many problems where they give you the sample data and they don't give you uh, either X bar or in that case, it would be S. And so you have to calculate both. I'm not sure if your book does that. Uh, but that is a thing that I see done. Okay, so checking the requirements first. The sample is a simple random sample. Because the sample size is n equals 15, uh, the requirement that the population is normally distributed or the sample size is greater than 30 can be satisfied only if the sample data appear to be from a normally uh, distributed population. So here they're going to go into a section that we didn't cover called, um, I think it's called Investigating Normality from chapter six. Um, so I would not give you a problem like this. Uh, here, this is something out of, uh, in, or I think it's called Assessing Normality, all right? Uh, so the type of problem that I would be more likely to give you, it would just come right out and say that the population is normally distributed. Okay. Anyway, once you're happy that those requirements are satisfied, uh, you use your formula, Z sub alpha over two times sigma over the square root of N. Because we're looking for a 95% confidence interval, Z is 1.96. Sigma is known to be 2.9. N is 15. This comes out to be uh, 1.4676. <clears throat> All right, so the 95% confidence interval would go uh, 30.9 plus or minus 1.4676. And when you crunch those numbers, uh, you're going to round them to one decimal place because they gave us the summary statistics, which were already rounded to one decimal place. So remember that when you're given summary statistics, you round your confidence interval limit, limits to the same number of decimal places. So that's why these are rounded uh, to two decimal places. So we are, oops, they didn't include an interpretation. Uh, so we're 95% confident that the true population mean is somewhere between 29.4 and 32.4 hectograms. Okay, and again, remember this example illustrates the situation in which the population standard deviation is known, uh, which is rare. The more realistic situation uh, with sigma unknown is considered in uh, the video part one also, as well as in part one of this section. Okay. All right, so uh, we will end with just a summary of what to do in which situation. So if sigma is unknown, 
and you have either a normally distributed population or n is greater than 30, you use the t distribution. Uh, if sigma is known and you have a normally distributed population or the sample sizes are bigger than 30, then you use the standard normal distribution. Uh, and we will not deal with the case where the population is not normally distributed and you have small samples. Uh, it tells you a little bit about how to deal with that here. That is the end of section 7.2.